grade 6 math number 9.8, divide integers. Over the last couple of videos, we've been talking about multiplying integers, and now we're going to talk about dividing integers. Well, division is the inverse operation of multiplication, so when we divide, we have the same rules as when we multiply. When we have two like signs, then we're going to have a positive answer. So when we divide a positive by a positive, our answer is positive. And when we divide a negative by a negative, we're going to have a positive because the signs are like. And when the signs are unlike, we're going to have a negative for a quotient. If we divide a positive by a negative or a negative by a positive, because they're unlike, we're going to have a negative answer. And the zero property rule stands just as in multiplication. If we have zero and we divide it by a negative or positive number, it's still going to be zero. All right? And for those of you, of you who haven't been completely following along, I use these chips. Red means negative and green means positive, and they stand for one. So if I had five red chips, it means a negative five. And if I had three green chips, it's a positive three. Okay? Division is the inverse operation of multiplication. So what's good for the product is good for the quotient. 12 divided by 3 equals 4, and it's the inverse of 3 times 4 equals 12. See? Division and multiplication are inverse operations. So, if I have negative 12 divided by 3, that's a positive 3, I'm going to get a negative 4. See, they're unlike. Unlike signs make a negative answer. Because positive 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. See? If I had 12 red negative chips, and I broke that into three groups, there would be four red negative chips in each group. See? If I have a positive 12 and I divide it by a negative 3, I'm going to have a negative 4 because these are unlike signs. If I had negative 3 times negative 4, I would have a positive 12, like that one. See? So two negatives make a positive because they negate each other. If I said, I do not have none. If I do not have none, then I must have some. Okay? When we have negative 30 and we divide it by negative 2, it's going to equal a positive 15. We have like signs, so it's going to make the quotient positive. But if I have 30 little red negative chips and I divide them into groups of two little red negatives in each group, there's going to be 15 of them. I'm going to have 15 groups of negative 2. See? If I have 28 red negative chips and I divide them into groups of 7, or seven groups, I'm sorry, there's going to be a negative four chips in each group. And because they have unlike signs, I'm going to have a negative quotient. If I've got zero and I divide it by negative 14, it's going to be zero. That's the zero property rule. You can't divide zero into anything, can you? If I have a positive 24 and I divide it by a negative 8, I'm going to have a negative 3 because negative 8 times negative 3 equals positive 24. See? These are unlike signs, the positive and negative. It's going to give me a negative, all right? If it says to evaluate, and it says t divided by negative 4, and for t equals a positive 32, we just rewrite that 32 in place of the t, and we solve it. 32 divided by negative 4 is negative 8. See? They've got unlike signs, so our answer is going to be a negative. If it says a divided by 6, for a is negative 48, we just rewrite it with the negative 48 in place of the a, negative 48 divided by 6, and we say, what is 48 divided by 6? So if you have to come up with the number first and then do the sign, that's fine. You could even do the inverse and say 6 times what is 48? 6 times 8. Well, this is a negative and that's a positive, so it's going to have to be a negative because they're unlike. We've got negative 63 divided by x, and for x is a negative 9. We rewrite it with, whoops, the negative 9 in place of the x. So now we've got negative 63 divided by negative 9. These are like signs, so our answer is going to be positive. See that? All right. If we see this and it says solve, and it says x divided by negative 3 equals 15, we can just do the inverse operation and multiply these two to get our answer. We can do the number first then figure out the sign second, all right? So what is 3 times 15? Well, 3 times 15 is 45. So we know the answer is 45, but is it a negative or a positive? Well, the answer is a positive, and we've got a negative in the equation. How do we get a positive if there's a negative in the equation? 
It's going to have to be like sines. That means this is going to have to be a negative 45. So it's like the 3, and our like sines give us a positive answer. A divided by 5 equals negative 4. We say the inverse, 5 times 4 is 20. So we know the answer is 20. But is it a negative or positive? Well, we got a negative 4 for an answer for a quotient, but the 5 is positive. How do we get a negative answer when there's a positive in the equation? It's an unlike. That means the 20 is going to have to be negative so that they're unlike and give us a negative quotient. Negative 36 divided by y equals 12. So we ask ourselves, what times 12 equals 36? Well, 3. 3 times 12 is 36. But is it negative or positive? Our answer is positive. But the 36 is negative. So how do we get a positive answer? Like signs. So the y is going to have to be negative. So it's going to have to be a negative 3. Now we've got 49 divided by b equals negative 7. So we ask ourselves, what times 7 equals 49? Well, 7 times 7 equals 49. Is it negative or positive, though? Well, let's look at the problem. Let's look at the equ equation. We've got a positive 49, but we got a negative answer. The only way to get a negative answer is with unlike signs. So if this one's positive, this b is going to have to be negative. So the answer is a negative 7. See? So I want you to remember that like signs means a positive quotient. And unlike signs means a negative quotient or product, right? I also want you to remember that the absolute value of a number is how far away it is from 0. So the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, the absolute value of 5 is 5, and the absolute value of negative 26 is 26. It's just how far away it is from 0. And those slash lines means absolute value, okay? Just take away the lines and take away the sign, and you've got the absolute value. I also want you to remember the additive inverse of a number means the opposite across the zero. The additive inverse for negative 3 is positive 3. It's the opposite number across the zero, okay? Just like these. The opposite of 4 is negative 4. The opposite of 1 is negative 1. The opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. See? Additive inverse. So just remember, like signs positive, unlike signs negative. We're going to continue talking about integers and I'll see you in the next video. I want you to keep up the good work. Keep practicing. If you practice this, you, you're going to remember it more, okay? But you're going to be fine. I have faith in you, all right? I'll see you next video. Keep up the good work. Bye.